Hi, welcome to my guide for the tombs of Amaskut, also called Raid 3 in RuneScape. Uh, yeah, this is not my headset. I'm cleaning the earmuffs of mine, so don't wonder, or in case you wonder. <laughs> So how to get here, I think you're aware of how to get here. You need to finish the quest Beneath Cursed Sands, then you get access to TOA. Then you either use the Fairy Ring, AKP, but you need 62 agility for that. Or you use the Pharaoh's Scepter. So, gear setup. Gear setup. This is my setup. Uh, I also have Tumekin's Shadow. I won't be using it so it's more realistic or more budget friendly in a way because not everyone has access to Tumekin's Shadow. Therefore, I will be using Trident of the Swamp. So, uh, let me let me show you gear setup. <clears throat> this is the gear setup. Let me make it bigger for you. First, melee, obviously, Torva, I don't know if everyone has access to it, but I suggest just use Bandos. I think Bandos is more accessible for more people. If not, then just Fighter Torso, Blessed Dehyde, works as well. Weapon, well, Fang, Fang is kind of expensive, so maybe not everyone has access to it either. You can also use a Zamorak Hasta or the Abbey Dagger, obviously then the Defender. Um, I'm use I will be using Fang. Uh, just use Sparrow's Gloves. Prim Boots. I don't know if you have it, but Dragon Boots work too. Light Bearer. This ring is really, really important. So I suggest you save up 6.5 mil or 6.6 .6 mil and just go ahead and buy Light Bearer. This is really important. If you're not able to afford it, how much is Brim? You could also buy a brimstone ring, but honestly, just go for a light bearer. It's, it's way better. And then you need a BGS, and also bring your dragon dagger. Then ranged uh, Mazori. Let's not speak about it. Uh, either Armadil, Carols, or Blessed Dehyde. Or if you have Bofa, you can also bring Crystal Armor. That works as well. Yeah, light bearer, as I said. Then offhand if you're using a crossbow, a armadur crossbow as weapon, bofwa, dragon crossbow works too. Also bring your blowpipe, magic, obviously ancestral, <coughs> ancestral, uh, imbued god cape. I suggest you go with arims. I started to raid with arims as well, and then yeah, trident of the swamp. This is what I will be using. Uh, I'm using Aladdin's Sword as offhand and Light Bearer. So this is the setup you are going to use. And as I said, if you have a Banner's God Sword, bring it. It will make the raid easier for you. Blowpipe, bring it as well. You can also use it as weapon. I suggest you. Never mind. Never mind. Um, do you don't have to bring Blowpipe. <clears throat> it's for somewhat. Ex um, Somewhat advanced. It's a somewhat advanced technique You don't have to bring it if you need more potions all good. This is essential bring your dragon dagger This is the MVP weapon weapon of TOA Regarding the gear setup Don't forget to bring a pickaxe. You're going to need the pickaxe if this is your very first time You need to bring a pickaxe if this is not your first time you probably have the deposited one, but make sure to bring a pickaxe if this is your very first raid. You can also use, or, or what I suggest is bring carrot, bring your carries, bring your carries partisan. You can use the carries partisan against Kefri. You're going to see the fight later. You can also use it for Kefri, or what you can also do, or what I did. I also used it for Baba. I had no Fang. I used it for Kefri, or I basically used it as my melee weapon. You don't have to use Abby Dagger or whatever. What we just saw. You can also just use Keras Partisan. That works just as fine. Yeah, as I said, bring Barrow's gloves. 
Prims or Dragon Boots. You don't have to switch these. Just bring this. And then the switches, they add up to you. I don't know how fast you are with switching gear, but you could just remove the head and just bring Native Snout's Helm or Face Guard if you have it. You can just bring this and remove the head as switch. If you have Crystal Armor, of course bring full Crystal Armor because of the bonus, it's too good. So yeah, ba that's basically the setup. This is what I will be using. As I said, I will use a somewhat... It's not really 100% budget friendly because Ancestral is kind of expensive still. But you can just use Arams. It just works as well. Okay, so now that we are in the tombs of Amoskut, I will be calling it TUA for you. <laughs> Raids 3. Uh, I have to say this is the easiest one out of them three. Chambers of Zarek Zarek and Theater of Blood are way more difficult. This is by far the easiest one to learn. By far the easiest one to learn. And after you watch this guide, you are good to go, bro. Or sister, or whatever you want me to refer you as. Okay, so as soon as you reach TOA, <clears throat> you need to inspect this obelisk. Down here at the bottom, you have to make a party. Then, important, invocations, invocations. This is really important. You need to reach at least 150 so you get all the good stuff that you are going to look for. So don't even, <clears throat> don't even bother not doing any invocations. Um, do your first one, two, three without invocations, all good. Learn the mechanics, all good. But then, start using invocations. Otherwise, you're not going to get the good stuff, okay? So, I will be showing you the easiest, the easiest invocations that you can easily use for free, free invocation levels and f for the good stuff, or the chance for the good stuff. So, softcore run. I suggest turn this on. You can die three times. If you die twice, just leave the raid so you don't have to pay 500k. As I said, do one, two, three entry modes, softcore one, turn it on. You should be familiar with the mechanics by then shouldn't be a problem if you have struggle turn it off all good just turn it off then next next one on a diet just do it just do it free 15 points turn it on turn it on on a diet lively larvae carefree's x will be more troublesome turn it on blowing mud three points turn it on not just the head arterial spray blood thinners Turn it on, easy. Gotta have faith, jungle japes, shaking things up. Turn it on, ancient haze, acceleration, penetration, overclocked, overclocked two. Turn it on, three points, and you're already at 150. That's what you want to turn on, okay? Just do this. Turn these on. Um, if you are more familiar with this, uh, you can also put a timer, the 40 minute timer. I will be turning it off since I'm explaining things and tell you what tiles to mark and so on. But you can also turn on the timer, all good. Mm, walk the path, basically 350 points. Not bad as well. Deadly prayers, you can also use this. <clears throat> In a solo, you can also use aerial assault. More overlords works as well. Feeling special for Akka. Stay vigilant. Mind the gap, boulder dash. Insanity, if you learn insanity, that's another 350 points. So it's quite easy to reach even 300, so you can do expert modes for even higher chances but just do 150s learn the mechanics learn the bosses and so on and so on and then you will be fine okay so enough of that here's what you do you will want to pre-pot okay you will want to pre-pot and for that i am going to use a divine ranging potion and a divine super comet potion I'm gonna eat Manta Ray or Shark, whatever works, to get back to 99 HP. And then eat an Anglerfish to reach 120, 21 HP. So let's pre-pot. Beautiful. So here's my setup. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay. So here's my setup. I am using, this is necessary, bring one Divine Super Comet Potion with one dose. 
bring uh, this is what I bring one two three four I bring four brews as you can see I still have an inventory slot because I'm lazy I don't want to drop things so I just leave one you can bring five brews if you need them you can bring five brews and I bring four super restores depending on your switches as I said you can leave the blowpipe that's another brew maybe you just don't you don't switch the helm that's another brew you have to see what works best for you or and how your gear setup is. If you're really good, you basically need one brew. One brew is even enough if you're really good in lower lower rates or normal level rates. So this is my setup. And it's up to you if you want to increase anything of this. Okay, let's go ahead. We step inside. And you will see we have four rooms on the side. We have four rooms. Path of Krondis, Path of Het, Path of Epmiken, and Path of Scarabaras. <laughs> and here's what we're doing. This is the normal order. This is the order everyone does if you raid with others in free for all worlds or whatever. If you raid with anyone... This is the order. Path of Krondis, aka Zebek. Path of Krondis, aka Zebek. Then Path of Skabaras, aka Kefri. After Kefri, Path of Het, aka Akka. After Akka, last room, Path of Abmikin, Baba. This is the regular order, okay? There's also a different order. If you are a little, let's say if your if your range setup is a little weaker, if your melee setup is the strongest and you're struggling with range damage, then there's another order. Or also for solos, there's a different order. This is the order you're going to do if you're struggling with range DPS. Baba, Path of Epmiken, Kifri. Path of Scababaras, Akka, Path of Het, and then Zebak, Path of Krondis. If you do the second order, you have to bring two doses of Super Combat potions. Two doses. Don't forget if you do the second order. I suggest you do the first, but if you do the second, you need to bring two doses because you're going to use one before Baba and one before Kefri. Okay, let us start with the first Path of Krondis. Really simple. We begin. You just step inside. So this is the reason why I didn't bring another potion. So I have one slot for the water container. You step inside. You need to grab the water container. If you don't have inventory slots, drop something. And what we want to do here is... We need to fill the this one with water. Oh, by the way, um, sorry, I forgot. You should bring Ancients with Ice Barrage. If you get the threat with one more rune slot, then bring Blood Barrage as well. So what we want to do... This one is really easy. This one is really easy. You just wait for this. As soon as the first disappears, you click here. You run through. As soon as the first there disappears, you run through. Grab the water. Go over here. Same thing here. Wait for this spike to go away and run through. And try to avoid the poison. So, you see there are crocodiles. The crocodiles will drink your water. That's why you bring ice barrage. You freeze the crocodiles. You freeze the crocodiles. You freeze the crocodiles and get rid of them. Oh boy, I'm too slow. I'm being overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you and then I will just restart all good. So, this is the second. I'm going to show you the easiest way to not get any damage. Because every time you get hit, the water will be reduced. So wait for this first spike to disappear. Avoid the poison. Run through. Grab the water. And the same technique applies here. This spike 
You wait for it to disappear and just run. Run the second it disappears. And you don't take damage. Next one. This one. I honestly don't know the order to go without damage. I think just wait for this to disappear and run. Yeah, it worked. Okay, you wait for this to disappear and run. Grab the water. Now, this one easy, easy. You look at the spike, wait for it to disappear and run, but avoid the poison. So, spike, wait for it to disappear and just run. And you don't take damage. Next one. It's pretty simple. You just run through. Same applies for this one. Just wait for this spike to disappear and run through. So, since this is a solo, the water does respawn after a long, long while. If you are in a duo, it still takes a long time, okay? If you are in a trio, the water respawns quite fast and you could do this all the time. This is the easiest one to get water. So if you're in a trio or higher, you could just run through and grab the water all the time at this spot. But the other ones are not too hard if you just follow what I just said. You can't leave until the challenge is over. Oh, okay. Oh boy, there are so many crocodiles. Okay, let me see if I can just kill them. Lol, I'm out of running energy. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to get rid of them real quick. And... Then we continue. Okay, there we go. And as I said, we're going to fill this with water. Okay, it seems like I got hit somewhere. So, let's go ahead and grab some water. If you grab water, your stamina is also recharged by 20. Oh, there's another crocodile. Uh, as you see, he's trying, or he is, drinking the water or removing the water. There we go. First one disappeared. Avoid the poison. I think I'm going to get hit. Yeah. Because I had to avoid the poison. Okay, I have to do one more. Oh boy. <laughs> I need run energy. Okay, we are good. So, as soon as this is filled, we continue. So now we're going to fight the first boss, Z-Bug. Or Z-Bag, I don't know. And what you want to do here is, if you have a Banos God Sword, equip it. Equip the Banos God Sword. Pray, Chivalry, a uh, Piety, Piety. <laughs> and I like to go in with Pray, Protect from Melee. You run in, spec him. This is the tile where he can't attack you with Melee anymore, okay? So, you hit him, attack fast. And back off immediately. Now here's what he can do. You see the pots that he's throwing at me. The pots. The pots means pray against magic. Blood clots you avoid. Try to avoid the blood clots. And as you can see, he can spit some poison as well. No, let me do it this first. So, pots mean protect against magic. And if he throws stones, it means protect from range. And as you can see, he sometimes spits poison. And some stones appear. There are also going to appear some vases with water. 
these ones. You need... You need to push these vases against the stone to remove the poison because you have to stand next to it or in front of it as protection. This is also he can do, like these water... Water thingies. You have to avoid them. You have to avoid the water to not get hurt. There we go. This is the attack that I was talking about. So this one, I have to push it like this. Bloop. And the poison disappears. Hide behind it. If you don't, you're dead. This is really important. You have to hide behind the stone. Otherwise, you're going to die. This is basically all the boss can do. If you play with more than one person, always make sure that you're not standing next to each other. Because he can cast Blood Barrage. If you stand next to your friends, this guy is going to heal so much and you basically insta-die. Don't stand next to each other. Always make sure you have a fair distance. I think the distance needs to be at least two tiles. So always make sure you have two tiles distance from your friends if you fight z <clears throat> There we go. Now if you defeat him, talk to the ghost and we're back in the lobby. We're doing the first path as I said, we go to K3. Go ahead and go to K3. So, what I want you to do. I want you to activate the Tombs of a Mascot plugin. I want you to activate the Tombs of a Mascot puzzle helper. This makes this room a joke. You see the red squares here already? Basically, you have to walk on this. You go in, walk on this, walk on this, bloop, 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 done. If you're with friends, one person has to do this puzzle, next person goes here and does this puzzle, okay? Since this is a solo, I just go in. Every time you go in and there's nothing, you have to inspect the tablet. You go here, inspect the tablet, that's it. Simple as that, it, it basically tells you what to do. You go here, finish this one, pattern done. So, if you're with more people, you have to go straight through. You just do this um, on your side. But since this is solo, I need to crawl through and do the next. Um, the scarabs will appear after a time and start to attack you. You can just protect from range. This one is the worst. I'm going to show you. You have to find the right order. And if you hit it wrong, stones will fall. And you have to avoid the stones. So, puzzle helper or TOA plugin. Bloop, bloop. One, two. Now we have to find three. There we go. There we go. And done. Perfect. Um, this puzzle basically, if you activate this. It's going to tell you like one, two, three, four, five. You need to make this in order. One, two. Do this step by step. If you walk too many times, this fails. So just do it step by step. So next one is like a uh, memory. I just spit. <laughs> this is like a memory. You usually have another person on the other side that is matching your side. So let's go diamond. Okay, I need to need to do this first so I see everything okay so wings knives I have to run over you usually have another person on the other side uh, W W boot boot I have to run over star run over <clears throat> diamond run over perfect Done. We're done. Next boss. K3. Uh, for K3. You should. Use your best step weapon. For K3 you can also bring. Karis. Karis Partisan. So. K3. 
let's do the let's do the tiles first. So we go inside. This is the center. One, two, three, four. I want you to mark this tile, okay? Mark this tile. If you are playing in a group, most people most people will refer to this tile as southwest. You stand either here or you stand here. You see the dung attack. It hit me. What you want to do if you see flies flying around you, like the flies around Kefri, they will fly around you. You're going to stand here or here. And then the poop will fall here. This is referred as Southwest, as I said. Um, this is kind of advanced. I also want you to mark the brown tiles here. This tile and this tile. If the flies are around you, I want you to run a bit. You run like one or one, two, three tiles away from the brown tile. And then you have a straight line. This is referred as trap. You're going to see what this is supposed to mean later on. So this is the trap. Mark this, southwest and trap, okay? So here's the basic mechanics of Kefri. Kefri shoots out some eggs. You will want to avoid them. They deal damage if you stand next to them. The bigger, darker eggs, they spawn the agile scarabs. You can destroy them to avoid spawning them because they keep attacking you continuously. Kind of annoying. Not really necessary. So you can just ignore it, I would say. And yeah, prey range as soon as the scarabs appear. If you have a BGS, use it on Kefri. Great, I didn't hit. So as I said, best stabbing weapon. Kefri also shoots fireballs. You see this small shadow appearing beneath my feet. Just walk away from it. One tile. There's an invocation where Kefri is taking two tiles with the fireball. It's kind of easy in a solo as well. So basically a free invocation. If you're familiar with it or confident with it, you can also activate it, but yeah. So here's what's going to happen. First phase of Kefri, done. Spitting Scarab. You have to kill the Spitting Scarab. You see these swarms going to Kefri. The swarms heal Kefri. If you killed the Scarab, equip your blowpipe if you bring it and kill the swarming Scarabs to avoid Kefri from healing. In a solo, this is pretty difficult. I would say just wait. If you're with more people, do this, do this, do this. It's going to help your team really, really a lot. <laughs> so next phase. Oh, damn it, damn it. I think I messed up. Yes, I messed up. Okay, yeah. Sh okay, we're good. I messed up in a way. Going to see why. Should be fine though. This is an easy raid. So, <clears throat> next phase. So usually you just stand around your tiles, like either here or up there, next to the brown one. So if you reach second phase, Arcane Scarab. Usually you can melee this, but the poop is blocking my way, so I have to range him. You have to kill him as fast as you can. As fast as you can, you have to kill him. Because this happens. If he manages to charge entirely, you're one shot. You have to kill the uh, arcane scarab as fast as you can. Okay, let's do this properly now without uh, too much explaining so I can focus on the poop so I don't mess up again. <clears throat> so you can also use the caress here. So. The flies are around me, I walk two tiles away and poop in a straight line. I should have just walked up, but that's fine. <laughs> I just go on the other side now.
If your damage is high enough and you see you're going to defeat Kefri or the first phase without the second line of poop, I suggest just wait. Just wait for the poop to appear. So you can trap the melee guy. There we go. Just make sure you have two straight lines. <clears throat> now if you're dueling <clears throat> sorry, if you're doing a solo and you do southwest. You can just go ahead and kill Kefri, no problem, there's no need to wait. But if you want to trap the melee guy, for example if you do the more overlo overlords invocation, then the melee guy will also spawn after the first phase and then you will want to um, trap him because he's, he's a heavy hitter. If he is on you, then you have to play melee. So in higher rates you usually trap him. Because he's unable to reach you, attack you, makes everything a little easier. Also, um, in the first phase, or when Kefri is healing, the scarabs, there are bigger scarabs that are flying towards you. It's like the fireball, you have to avoid them. Same mechanic, just different animation. It looks different. So, we go ahead and defeat Kefri. Arcane Scarab, as I said, focus this guy, no matter what happens, no matter what's going on, you have to kill him. Your entire team should rush towards him and rush him down. After you de dealt a certain amount of damage, he's going to teleport over here. And if you did it again, if you don't manage to defeat him after this, the first teleport, he's going to teleport over here. So you go here and kill him. You have to kill him. So, this is the melee guy. If you trap him, you're going to use your magic. Just use your magic and kill him. He's a little tanky. Melee works best, but he's heavy hitting. So, if you, if you trap him, just go ahead and mage him. It works just as good. Keep avoiding the fireballs. Yeah, dung attack. So, I just stand here. Oh, he disappeared. Okay. I never seen that. Okay, whatever. Mm, if the melee guy is still alive, he is going to heal Kefri all the time. And the higher his HP, the more he heals Kefri. So, I would say just go ahead and kill him. If you do southwest, you can melee him. It's faster, but as I said, he hits hard, bro. He can... If you don't look, or if you don't watch your life, you, you can be dead in a blink of an eye. That guy can really hurt. So, dung attack. Since I trapped him, I go here, make the poop stack. If you do southwest, stand either here or here. Now, if you enter the last phase, Kefri does the dung attack as soon as you remove all of the shield. So, make sure you stand next to your tile where you want the poop to go. And this is the last phase where you have to kill Kefri. Poop attack. Boop, done. Easy. Kefri is one of the easy. I think Kefri is the easiest one. Kefri is the easiest one. Mechanic-wise, Zebug and Kefri are the easiest ones. Uh, Zebug is really... Well, he can be a little stressful sometimes. So after you finish two rooms, every time you finish two rooms, Helpful Spirit will appear. This guy gives you supplies. Hey! So... Nectar is the equivalent to a Ceradomine Brew. Tears of Elidinus is a super restore. Ambrosia is the best. <laughs> Ambrosia, you drink it, you're at 105 HP, 105 prayer. You have anti-venom, everything. This is the emergency potion. Bless Crystal Scarab. You smash it or crush it. It passively restores your prayer points over time. Really helpful. Smelling salts. This is an overload, but better. It does not damage you. It's an overload you just eat and you don't get damage. 
And then we have Liquid Adrenaline. Liquid Adrenaline reduces the cost of your special attack. So usually after you finish the two rooms, the first you want to get is power because you need two salts and one Liquid Adrenaline. If your supplies are low, if your supplies are low, you can also take life. But usually you should still be good on supplies and you should be able to take power. If not, you can take life. But usually you go for power. And then you have this a little supply bag. You can open it and withdraw your supplies so it's not clogging your inventory. Um, yeah. So next up is Akka. For Akka, you can equip your magic equipment. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention you need a pickaxe. Um, I'm going to cut a small clip before that and bef when I speak about the gear and tell you to bring a pickaxe. So, pickaxe. Mm. Yeah, you can withdraw your pickaxe here and deposit it. I like to equip it so I can use my special attack. So this is basically... Uh, what you want to do is, you see the lasers, laser beam, you want the laser beam to hit this shield statue. So this is something I guess learning by doing, there are only a fixed amount of patterns, so I don't have space. There, uh, there's a fixed amount of patterns, so you're going to learn them sooner or later, and this pattern uh, there are always three mirrors that you can pick up, which you will need. So this mirror, I make him face this way, so the laser beam hits the statue. You see these black shadow orbs appearing. Uh, if they hit you, it deals damage to you. So you can see I only need two mirrors in this pattern. Because the laser beam goes left. It hits this mirror, it goes down, and then it goes to the right. So this is an easy pattern. You just have to learn this. Now, what most people do, you ready up the mirror, <coughs> you ready the mirror, so you can right click and push it for the next rotation. So laser beam, push, so everyone can gather at the head seal. Use your special attack, if you have it, if you have drank pickaxe or crystal pickaxe, and then you destroy the seal. If you have people with low tier pickaxes or low mining levels, then you have to do this twice. Gladly I'm level 99 and I only have to do this once. This I, I don't like this room, I hate it, it's so annoying. Um, yeah, Make sure to pick up your supplies if you drop them. Deposit your pickaxe. And head on over to the next room. Akka! Now, you can ignore all of the tiles that are around here. This is really, really advanced. Um, what I want you to do, you see the black skull, red flame, white prayer symbol and the thunder, yellow thunder. I want you, I want you Wait, I can make this easier for me as well. I wanted to do this and now I have the time for it. Ground markers. What I want you to do. We're going to do this together, okay? So, I'm, I want a blue tile here. Blue. I want a red tile. Mark this, okay? This. Mark this tile. This one. Red. Then I need a white tile. I hope, I hope the white tile is visible. Yeah, it is. Perfect. Okay, and yellow. And I want a yellow tile. Uh, it's yellow already. Lol, my bad. Perfect, beautiful. This is what I want you to do. Mark the four centered tiles. This is really important. So, Akka. Start the fight with your magic equipment. Go inside and pray melee. Every time Akka doesn't... Every time Akka does a special attack, he's going to switch attack style and protection prayers. But it's always in the same order. 
You start with magic. Pray against melee. If he switches. Attack with melee. Pray against range. Next special. Attack with range. Pray against magic. It's the simple rock paper scissor. Uh, rock paper scissor format. Simple as that. Attack with magic. Pray against melee. Attack with melee. Pray against range. Attack with range. Pray against mage. That's the order. Akka has a special attack. And this is why the four center tiles are so important. It's basically like a... What's it called? Simon Says. The lights will start to shine or brighten up in an order. Um, it's always four. It's always four colors unless... If you check the top left, unless this is level two. This is the level of the room. If this is level two, he's going to do five colors. Keep that in mind, it's important. So in this case, we have four. If this, if the room is level two, five colors. So let's say, um, let's do a random order. Uh, no, there are also a certain amount of patterns. They are always the same. After a certain time, you know all of the patterns. So let's say blue, red, white, yellow. You stand here, you go here, here, here. After the explosion, you're going to see in the practical example. Now, what is important to know, or a really helpful tip, if you don't pay attention or whatever, you at least have a 50-50 chance to get the right tile because it's always the adjacent tile to the color. So if it's blue, it's either yellow or red. If it's blue, it can never be white. It's never a cross pattern. Never. Always adjacent. So if it's blue, it's impossible to be white. If it's red, it's impossible to be yellow. If it's white, it's impossible to be blue. If it's yellow, it's impossible to be red. Keep that in mind. It's important. If you don't pay attention, you have a 50-50 chance to at least get the right color. But I suggest just pay attention. <laughs> so, for the Akka fight. For the Akka fight. I want you to use your salt. Make sure you use your salt. This is really important. You use your salt. Eat your salt. Pray against mage. Uh, sorry, pray against melee. Activate your magic damage. Pray. Go in. Now, the first person, if you play with more people, the first person that goes in is being targeted by Akka. What you do, run around. Kite him. He's trying to chase you. If he attacks you, he's going to switch his attacks. If he does not manage to attack you, he's not going to switch. After you dealt a certain amount of damage, Akka's shadows will spawn. Kill them as fast as you can. You have to target them because Akka is invulnerable. Kill the shadows. You see the little sand clocks or what's, what are you called in English? I don't know. You see the timer. The timer. You see the timer. If the timer goes full, Akka's shadows will deal or will do a special attack and it's going to hurt you it's going to hurt you now we have to puzzle blue yellow blue yellow now explosion you move to the next tile yellow next tile blue and yellow you can also stand in here but i suggest just mark the tiles and stay on the tiles now i got hit and i could not Activate my prayer anymore because it disables your prayer With the smelling salt you can just drink Bruce. It's going to Re restore your stats. It's going to restore your stats. So don't hesitate drinking Bruce with The salt Now you see I am black If you are black stop moving because you're going to see these orbs will appear You, you can PK your entire team with the orbs don't move if you are black. You're going to PK your entire team. Stand still if you're targeted by his special attack. If your character turns black, stop moving. Stop moving if your character turns black. Since I am solo, he has one more special attack that he's not going to use since I'm alone. But 
He is also able to deal, do a special attack where you turn white. If you turn white, stack on the same tile with your entire team. Usually it's really hard to do that with randoms. If you do it with a friend and you're on Discord, just gather, stand on the same tile. If you do this with randoms, if you turn white, run away from them. Stay in the... Make sure you stay in the certain chunk of the area so his shadows cannot hurt you. But stay away from your team inside this area. If you turn white, stay away from your team or everyone gather on the same tile. That's basically all of his special attacks. So, yeah. Colors, blue, red, blue, red. Easy, uh, easy pattern, easy to follow. Simple as that. Let's go. Alright. Every time he does a special attack, he's going to switch attack style and protection prayers. Make sure you follow. Always the same order as I mentioned earlier. Really simple to follow. Mm. You can also attack Akka with your blowpipe. But according to GPS calculator, if you have both one with full crystal armor, it deals more damage than blowpipe. So I'm using this. Oh, by the way, you're going to see if Akka is standing in the fields of his shadows. He's invulnerable. You can't hit him. Make sure you drag him inside, inside your area. So you're able to hit him. Otherwise he's immortal. Okay, white, yellow, white, yellow. Just use the four tiles. You don't need the other tiles or you don't need anything fancy. Just use the four tiles. Okay, if you manage to defeat Akka first time, this is his second phase. Pray against magic. You're going to see this is the worst. This is the worst part of the entire raid. Don't panic. Don't stay calm. Stay calm. This is the worst part. Avoid the white orbs and attack Akka. Try to avoid the white orbs. Attack Akka. If you're in a team, try to stand on the same tile because the damage is going to be shared. You share the damage. Stand on the same tile and the damage is shared. What you can do. You attack Akka, you right click him, if he teleports, you click attack Akka again, your character will automatically run to him, so you don't have to zoom out and search for him. You can right click him, wait for your character to attack, and if he teleports, you click on attack and your character runs there automatically. This is a somewhat experienced or not experienced advanced technique. I suggest don't use it, zoom out, but if you... If you're just going to tank the orbs and if you don't care, you can right click, click attack. Now now that Akka is defeated, mark the tiles. I, I assume we mark, you mark this. I assume you mark this. Okay. Next room. Baba. So for Baba, we're going to start with magic gear. This room can also wipe your team if you don't pay attention for this room you enter you see the crates here you have to take potions and you have to take hammers okay important if you forget you can step inside and here on the left and on the right and over there you see further crates so you can just grab these as well if you step inside already for this, it is important to communicate with your team. Communicate with your team. If you don't, you're going to wipe the team. Or your team is going to be wiped. Let me put it this way. So you see the vents. You see the vents over there. For the vents, you see a small... Or you see like a monkey skull. A red monkey skull appearing above the vents. And then it means you need to stand on a vent and left click 
neutralizing potion. You need to pour it in there to neutralize the vents. If if you're two people, you have to do two vents. If you're three people, you have to do three vents. If you're four people, you have to do four. If you're five, still four. Six, still four. Seven, still four. Eight, still four. If you don't do this, everyone in your entire team will be damaged. There's a second option. The pillars or roof support. If you see red skulls next to them, you have to repair the pillar. If you don't do this, you're going to be damaged again. Now, let's say you raid with randoms and you have this app mechan site and you see what's happening. What you want to do? You see vents. You press V. You press V in the chat. If you see pillars, you press P. Tell them pillars. Since I'm alone, there's another thing that can happen, but not in a solo. If your entire team, if the characters turn into red creatures or like red monkeys, you're going to see your whole team is red. I want you to mark this tile over here. You hit DD. Your entire team has to gather on this tile and you spam neutralizing potion because they are corrupted in this case. If they are corrupted, you need to neutralize them. And therefore, DD, everyone runs to this tile and then you neutralize them, spam this as soon as everyone is cured. Now, there are also monkeys that drag a poison trail behind them. If this tile is poisoned, you just move over to this tile. You just move over to this tile. If you are in a duo, maybe trio. Now let's say duo. Trio, that's not feasible for a trio. If you are in a duo, you can also right click use this and then just click on your teammate and you run towards him and cure him. It's easier in a duo to just do this, I think. You can also spam, or not spam, but you can also tell him to DD <clears throat> to gather on this tile. That works just as fine. But in a duo, I like to just use this on my mate and then go ahead and cure him. Now, keep this in mind. This is important. Turn the chat on. Make sure you keep your eyes open and pay attention to what's happening. So let's move in. You're going to see the first person that moves in has this red monkey skull above him. This means you have Admikin's sight. You have a granted Admikin's sight. And with Admikin's sight, you see what's going to happen. So, red monkeys, baboon brawlers. There, the red skulls. We go here, pour the neutralizing potion, and we cure or we re remove the fumes. So, there are several monkeys that you have to pay attention to. Red monkey, brawler. Brawler is going to attack you with melee. You have to attack the brawlers with mage. You see the shaman, the boon shaman over there. Make sure. Make sure you target the shaman first. Because the shaman, he's going to spawn baboon thralls. If he spawned a certain amount of thralls, the shaman is going to start attacking you. I think he can spawn four or five at a time. If he spawns four or five at a time, he is going to attack you. And if he is attacking you, he's draining your prayer points. Same goes for the thralls. They are draining your prayer points. Focus the shamans. Now, you see Cursed Baboon. Okay, let me switch since we have this now. Um, you see Volatile Baboon. Hold your shift button. Hold shift button and right click the Volatile Baboons. Right click with shift the Volatile Baboons and tag all. So you... So it's easier to see them because if they stand next to you, they are going to explode. Make sure you stand away, a tile away from them. 
if they explode. Next up, Curse Baboon. As you see, they draw a... It's Even it's Venom. It's a Venom Trail. They draw Venom Trails. So, Curse Baboons, you want to barrage them, Ice Barrage them. Freeze them. So they stop moving around, stop messing your area. You usually can use your salt in here as well. I'm not using it because I'm telling you what to do. I need my salt for Baba. Now, Volatile Baboon, go away from him. He's going to explode as soon as he is next to you. Now, you see, I have Venom. I'm gonna use my Antidote. You can also bring a Sand Fuel. Um, no, I need to put this at the beginning as well again. Now, you can also heal up. You can just barrage these guys. Just... Bash them and okay, not done yet. So we focus the shaman, shaman down, we switch, kill the thrower down, magic, bash to heal. Simple as that. Volatile Baboom. Shift, right click, tech all. Important. It makes your life easier because if you are more people, it can be really, really confusing and chaotic. It can be really chaotic and it's easy to lose the overview. So, right click, tech all, curse Baboon. So, you always see when they are approaching you. And as I said, don't forget, if you're in a group, your team is also able to turn red and then you need to gather at this tile and then you spam the curing potions all right next up baba so for baba for baba you're going to use your salt okay you, you use your salt if you have a bgs you spec him twice there's an invocation called mind the gap Mind the gap means after you dealt a certain amount of damage to Baba, he is going to jump up there and you're going to be pushed all the way back. If only if Mind the Gap is on. If you stand on one of these rows, this row, this row, this row, this row, this row. If Mind the Gap is on and you're being pushed back. And you stand on one of these rows, you're dead. Since we're not using Mind the Gap, it doesn't matter. But if it's on, don't stand on these rows, you're dead. But that's advanced. We're just we're, st we're just starting to learn TOA. This is all advanced. Okay, so Baba, he has a, a special attack. Uh, you will see some shadows appearing on the floor. Run away from it. When Baba is making some rocks fall into the arena, he sometimes or he's going to throw a rock at you. Baba is going to throw a rock at you, and you need to stand next. You need to stand next to the rock. You need to stand next to the rock. Otherwise, in a solo, I think you're one shot. And if you play with more people, it deals like 56 or 60 damage. So it really hurts. You need to stand next to the rock that falls. In a solo, nothing to pay attention to. In a duo, every one of your team needs to take one rock. In a trio, there's one rock with half HP and the other rock has full HP. So one person has to go to the half HP rock, the other two to the other rock. Four men, two people on one rock, two people on the other rock. It's like this, it scales, like if you are five people, there's a rock that can take three hits and the other rock takes two hits. Make sure you, sp you split. Sometimes in the heat of the battle, you're not able to make it on time to a rock. You can also walk next to the sarcophagus. It halves the damage. 
Not as good as the rock, but it halves the damage. So in the heat of the battle, if you see, okay, I, I'm too slow. I can't manage to reach the rock. Go next to the sarcophagus. It halves the damage. Sometimes, or not sometimes, but um, Baba also spawns some smaller monkeys. The smaller monkeys will go ahead and start attacking the sarcophagus. And the sarcophagus will shoot some projectiles on, into the arena. If you hit, it deals damage, obviously. So if the monkeys spawn, I like to kill them because it's really annoying if they manage to destroy a sarcophagus. And you can also, also use the monkeys. If Baba throws a rock, you could also stand to a monk next to a monkey and the monkey dies and it halves the damage for you. This is also something you could do. So let us go in and see how this looks in um, not in real life, but in real. Let, let's see a practical example. So we use our salt. You always want to pray from melee against Baba. So BGS spec, prayer on, shiver, uh, piety and protect from melee. BGS spec him. Perfect. Use your strongest step weapon. Now you see this animation? Rocks falling. Avoid the rocks. You see the rocks I was talking about. He is throwing a rock at me. Run next to the rock as fast as you can. Prioritize this. No matter what happens, just run to the rock. Now you see the baboons. I like to kill them. We're using the invocation jungle japes. If you kill the baboons, they spawn bananas. If you walk on them, you slip. Okay. Now he destroyed the sarcophagus. I'm going to show you what that does. Yeah, you see the red projectiles. Really, really annoying. So try to avoid this. Shadow attack. Run away. Now this is the attack. He throws us back and we use our range gear now. The rock with cracks in it. You have to attack it. Attack the rocks with the cracks. And avoid all of the other rocks. If you are fast enough, I didn't eat my salt. If you're fast enough, you destroy it and then you can run through and you can attack him. And then he stops this. What you can also do, the, ro the rocks with the cracks, you can use your blowpipe and use your special attack on it. You always land a max hit. So that means if you use your blowpipe special attack on a rock, you heal 50 HP. If you're out of supplies or whatever, you can use your blowpipe special attack on it. Free 50 HP. That's a lot. That's a lot. So what you could also do if your range gear is not strong enough. You can turn on rigor or any, any prey that increases your range damage. That's why I'm using my Bofa. Um, I'm one-shotting the rocks with Blowpipe. I have to two-shot them and I don't like that. So I'm using this. So the fight is pretty simple. Pay attention to the shadow, avoid it, attack. Pay attention to the rocks. And stand next to the rock if he throws one. If he spawns baboons, Kill the baboons because the sarcophaguses are really annoying. You don't want them to annoy you during the fight. Alright, and that's it already. We're going to go to the last boss now. Two rooms complete. Helpful spirit appeared. Now, first helpful spirit, we took power. We still have one sword and one liquid adrenaline. Now we want to choose life. So we have enough healing. Withdraw your sword and liquid adrenaline make sure you have at least one ad ambrosia in your inventory for emergency and one scarab so make sure you have one ambrosia in your inventory for emergency go quick enter <clears throat> use the crystal now 
before we do anything, before we do anything, I want you to do following. Mark this tile right in front of the obelisk. Mark this tile. Then mark this tile. Mark it. Did you mark it? Good. Go over here. Mark this tile. Marked. Perfect. So in this fight, if your team speaks to the ghost, the fight is going to start. You need one person always has to stand here at the beginning of the fight. One person always has to stand here and tank a bit of damage. Because there are orbs charging the wardens. And if you don't tank it, you're going to be dead. You're going to die <laughs> because of the special attacks. You're going to see later. So every time you start, one person has to tank the damage. You have to tank around 7 to 8. 7 to 8 attacks or 7 to 8 orbs. And then you can run back here and attack the obelisk again. So important, important. You have to stand here, tank 7 or 8 orbs, I believe. And then you can start. Um, now the warden, the warden fight, you start with magic, you attack the wardens with magic and then a heart is going to drop. When the heart drops, you want to switch to your dragon dagger, drink your adrenaline liquid if you, if you don't have the effect still, drink your adrenaline liquid, use all your dragon dagger specs on the heart. Second phase. Use ranged against the warden. If you manage to fill up the bar or reduce its life, whatever you want to call it, the heart is going to drop again. Same procedure. Equip your dragon dagger as fast as you can. Keep specking it. Now the Warden has two regular attacks. The Warden either shoots red skulls towards you. Red skulls mean magic prey. The Warden can also shoot rocks or stones, small stones at you. Stones mean range prey. The Warden also has three special attacks. The Warden can shoot a red sword at you and disables your prayer. Red sword means protect from melee. The warden can shoot a white a white light towards you. That means protect from magic. Uh, sorry, protect from missiles range. The warden can also shoot a blue orb at you. Blue orb means protect from magic. Sometimes you're going to see like red red dots or red lights appear. They start appearing here in this pattern like this three patterns if you see it make sure you either stand away from it it's going to keep spreading if it spreads you can either go inside because it's not going to go back you can go inside or you can just run here and stand here you're fully going to avoid any damage that this attack could deal and then sometimes the obelisk is going to spawn some floor is lava tiles. The floor is lava tiles. If you stand on it, your prayer is disabled because we have some warden invocations on. So try to avoid them. Try to avoid the floor is lava tiles. They, they appear in a pattern. Like, I don't know how many it is, but let's say this row is, this row is being targeted then it lights up boom and deals damage if you stand on it if you don't stand on it you're good to go but then let's say this is done we walk here because we are safe here because next is going to be this for example boom it lights up you can run here you can run here and then it starts like this you're safe here you're safe here now in a solo, you can also just stand next to the obelisk. It will shorten the, 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 the length or the width of the attack. You can just stand here, but be careful if you stand next to the obelisk and if you 
want to attack the warden, you run around it and it might hit you. So you can focus on dodging, stand next to the obelisk and just walk with it. So these are the basics of the warden fight. Now I'm going to show you how it looks. So before we start, we want to eat our salt and we want to drink our adrenaline. Equip our BGS, speak to the ghost, it starts. Pidey on, use one or two BGS specs on the obelisk and then you use your melee weapon. <clears throat> melee weapon on the obelisk now this appears if this appears you stand on this tile next to the obelisk okay if this disappears you run here because the next will appear you can either stand here on this tile or on this tile you can stand on any tile without the light as well but make sure that it's easier just stand on these tiles now you see a large ball of energy is shot your way if you are in a group if the blue large energy, energy ball is shot towards you, stay away from your group because it deals more damage when you are next to your group. Stay away from your group. And a large ball of energy is shot your way in blue. If the blue appears, you need to stand on the same tile as your entire team. If you don't, you're dead. In a solo, you just have to eat the attack. But in a team, Orange text, this is always first. Orange text. Ah, sorry. Uh, blue text. I mean, the first orb, first orb split from your group. Second orb, stand on the same tile as your group. Now you see the obelisk is doing the red attack. You can just run around as well, or you just stay in one corner. So, red skulls, magic prey, stone. Missile prey, or range prey, magic. This is the white light or white arrow. Oh yeah, I forgot. You can you also see shadows sometimes, and this you just want to avoid. Now heart is there. Spec it. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. All right, now we switch to mm, Rage. I hope he's going to do it, the attack again, where he spawns the lightning balls. Ah, there's this attack. Just stand here and you're safe. One more thing, the Warden also sometimes throws grayish rocks at you. If you have to move, if not, you're petrified. You're being petrified if you don't move. If a darker, it's, it's like it looks like mud, like somehow like mud. And then you saw if a shadow appears somewhere, there's going to be a lightning ball that's going to hit you. Let's say the shadow appears on this tile. You can either stand this, on this tile or this tile. It's not going to hit you. But if you stand further away, it's going to hit you. And this is the petrifying shot that I was talking about. So if the shadow attack appears, you can stand two tiles next to it, but only straight, not um, only in front of it, only in front of it. All other things won't work. You're going to be damaged. So I suggest you just run away from it. You can just run away from it as well. This you always avoid. Ah, there it is. Look. Boom. Boom. And it hit me. It disabled my prayer because we're using a specific invocation. Let me see if I can show you. Yeah, this. It's not going to hit me. Now, hello! <laughs> now we move on to the next phase, or the la yeah, the next phase, next phase. Mm. 
What I want you to do. You spawn. Mark these three tiles. Mark them. Do everything to mark them in your power. Mark them as fast as you can, okay? Mark them. It's important. Now we fight against Tumakin's Warden. He always starts left. You run to the left. Right. You run to the middle. Now, right. Left. Middle. This is a pattern. Right. Left. So left, right, middle. Left. Right. Middle. You're going to use your strongest ranged... Oh, not strongest. You're going to use the ranged equipment here. If you have Tumakin Shadow, you can also use Tumakin Shadow. Also, if you have Tumakin Shadow, you can use Tumakin Shadow on the obelisk as well. It's going to melt the obelisk. Now, it's... You have to get used to it, but it's quite simple. Mark the tiles. Left attack, we run to the left after it's done. After you deal a certain amount of damage, these skulls will spawn. You have to destroy them as fast as you can. If not, you're dead. If you still have your BGS spec, or if you have a BGS and if you have spec, or if you have a special attack power, you could use it. It's kind of... Kind of difficult or confusing. It could mess up your pattern, so I suggest only if you are only if you are familiar with this, just use it. If not, don't. If not, don't. Now you see, after the second time, he spawns Zebak, Zebak's Phantom. Zebak is going to use the attacks that he uses during the regular fight. So pots mean magic prey. If he's if he throws stones at us, range prey. Same pattern as always. Now after the third time, he's going to spawn Baba's phantom. Baba is going to throw rocks at us, as you can see. If you stand on the same tile, he, the rock will appear. Make sure you move. After the skulls are defeated, you have to move one time. But if you stay with the flow, the rock will never hit you. Only after destroying the skulls. If you are in the flow, the rock is not going to hit you. Now the skulls. You don't lose any ticks on the skulls, so you can do them just as smooth as that. Oh, by the way, you can also right-click your supplies and withdraw all or withdraw one. But be careful if you have a two-handed weapon and if you're using your Fang and Defender, be careful that you don't withdraw too much so you can't equip your weapon anymore. Now, last phase. This is the last phase. He's going to remove the tiles continuously. Just move to the front row. Watch out for the shadows on the floor. The shadows will spawn thunders. The thunders are going to hurt you. Keep your keep your left eye on Zebak. Keep your right eye on the floor. I know this this can be really overwhelming. I know. Don't panic. Stay calm. Don't panic. Keep your eyes open. Pay attention. Avoid the shadows. Keep an eye on Zebark. If there's an emergency, if you need, go ahead and drink your Ambrosia. 125 HP, 125 prayer. Keep your eyes open. Avoid the thunder. Don't stand on the same tile first because of the thunder and second because of the stones. That's it. That's how you do TOA. Congratulations, you just get your first KC. Or I don't know how many KCs you have, but this is how it works. Make sure to avoid the thunder, keep an eye on Z-Bug, and don't stand on the same tile. If you defeat the Warden, click the Teleport Crystal. Hope for Tumakin's Shadow. Sad, no perp. <laughs> 
So yeah, there's a scoreboard here. You can have some details about how your team did, points, damage, deaths, whatnot. And yeah, you see the symbol. This is your chest. If you have a purple, the sarcophagus is purple and then you have to open the sarcophagus. So there we go. Oh, not bad. 357k. I take that. <laughs> I take that. So you can bank, take or discard. I don't know why anyone would discard, so bank them all. That's how you do TOA. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with the grind. If you have any further questions on how to do anything, let me know in the comments. If you need help, if you can't finish your first raid, if you need some more help, let me know. I don't mind raiding with you in-game. Let me know, we can raid together. I will try to help you through a raid. I will try to explain things while you're doing it. Just let me know if you need help. I'm there, I'm gonna be there. That are the basics. That are the basics for TOA. There are also some advanced or expert strategies. For example, a Baba, it's called Red X. You make him loop the same attack all over again so he can't throw rocks. Or at Akka, it's called Butterfly. You, can, you run in a certain pattern and then he's not going to switch his attacks ever. It's too advanced for this guide. This is a beginner's guide. This is the first 10, 20, 30 KC guide. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. And as I said, if you need any further help, if you're struggling, let me know. I'm willing to help you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. And good luck on getting some perps or Tumekin Shadow. I've got my first Tumekin Shadow yesterday at 133 KC or something. So <laughs> really exciting. It's a really good money maker. I started well when I started doing this. When I started doing this, my bank was at I don't know how. Where was my bank? 500, 600 million, and yeah, now I'm at this value. So thank you for watching. Good luck on getting this. Enjoy. Have fun. Bye.